There's a feature in BrightPearl which lets you make manual changes to your inventory value, your asset value. This video shows you why you might want to do that and how to do it. So why might you want to update your inventory value? It's all to get more accurate profit figures. So if you remember that profit is revenue less cost of goods sold, that makes the cost of goods sold an important component. So the cost value of a sale is determined by the asset value of the inventory which has been shipped for that sale. If the inventory cost values are wrong, then the cost of sale entries will be wrong and your reported profit will be incorrect. However, when you receive goods on a purchase order, which is when you put the asset value into the system, you're not sure of the final price you're going to pay because you've not necessarily received the purchase invoice. So we use the purchase order price when you receive the goods as the received inventory value. When you later receive the purchase invoice against the PO, any variance between the two, between the received inventory value and the actual price paid, is posted directly to the cost of sales account on your general ledger. The inventory asset value itself is not updated at this point. So, until you've received the purchase invoice and have shipped all the inventory, you'll have under or over reported profit due to the timing differences. So instead of this variance amount being recorded in an inventory value change, it's recorded directly to the profit and loss report, which is in advance of the goods shipping. So just to reiterate, the cost of sale, your profit reporting, and your balance sheet will all be correct once all inventory is shipped and the purchase invoice has been received. So if the invoiced value is only pennies different from the received inventory value, or you expect the inventory to ship and the purchase invoice to be recorded quickly, leave the inventory value as is. You don't need to do anything and everything will work out just fine. Now if the invoiced value of goods on the purchase invoice is significantly different from the received invoiced value, or you expect the inventory to sell a long time in the future, perhaps after you want to do a year-end report, then it's a good idea to make an inventory value correction now. This will bring your balance sheet more in line with the actual asset you have. The variance in inventory value will still be shown on the profit and loss report, or income statement, as a cost of sale. So here's a simple example of what happens when there's no difference, so when the goods received value equals your invoiced value. On the first step, we receive two items at $15 per item on a purchase order, which gives us $30 of asset. Then in step two, we ship one sales order for one item, and the cost of sale of that particular sale is $15. So your asset is reduced to 15, and your cost of sales is increased to 15. You later receive the purchase invoice at $30, which matches the inventory received value, so there's no correction required. Then finally in step four, we ship a sales order for one item. Again, the cost of sale is 15, which brings our asset, our inventory asset, down to zero, and adds another 15 to the cost of sales, so the cost of sale is 30. So all of the inventory asset is transferred into cost of sales, and that's the end goal. So the next scenario, when you receive the purchase invoice at a different value from the goods received, we have to see what to do. In this one, we're not going to make a manual inventory value correction. So again, the first step is the same as before. We receive inventory, two items at $15 per item, which gives us an inventory asset value of $30. We ship a sales order, and because the cost of sale is 15, we reduce 15 from our asset and increase our cost of sales by 15. We don't make the inventory value correction, but when we receive the purchase invoice, we see that the supplier has charged us only $12 per item. So what we need to do is edit the purchase order and then receive the purchase invoice. BrightPearl will calculate that you've actually got a difference between the received inventory value at 15 and what you've received the purchase invoice at, at 12, and an accounts correction is made automatically for both of these items. So the difference between the two is $3, two items leads us to minus six on the cost of sales. This gives us a balance on cost of sales of 15 less six, so $9 balance. However, you've only sold one item, and it cost you $12, which means that the cost of sale is under by three. Nine is less than 12. Your asset is still recorded as 15, so your asset is over by 3. And because the cost of sale is under by $3, you're over-reporting profit in this particular scenario. However, when you finally ship the last item on a sales order, again the cost of sale is 15 because you did not make an inventory value correction. Everything corrects itself. Because the 15 cost of sales on the first sale, less the 6 correction, 
plus the 15 cost of sale on the second sale brings us to a total of $24 cost of sale, which is actually the sum of two items at $12. So that shows you how it corrects itself once everything is invoiced and shipped, even if you don't make a manual inventory correction. And this next example shows you what happens when we do make a value correction. So again, we receive inventory, two items at $15 per item. We ship an item, cost of sale $15. But now what we do is we recognize that we got that wrong. So what we're going to do is we're manually correcting the remaining inventory value. And I'll show you how to do that in Bright Pearl at the end of this video. What that means is we're going to reduce the existing asset down to $12. Because we've sold one, we can only reduce one. So that is a minus three. This means that our asset now becomes correct at $12, which is great for that balance sheet or end of period report. The cost of sale, however, is still over by $3 because that original sale is not corrected. You should leave that as is. Later, perhaps sometime later, you receive the purchase invoice, which is only $12 per item. You edit the purchase order as before, save it, and then receive the purchase invoice. Brightpool can see that you've only got one item that had the cost of sale at 15 because you've corrected the other, so it's only going to put a $3 correction in. The cost of sale now becomes accurate at $12, which is one step earlier than before. And we can see at the bottom that the assets have gone down to zero and the cost of sale works out at $24. So the benefit of doing the inventory value correction is that you get accurate balance sheet earlier and again, slightly more accurate cost of sale at an earlier point in time. But just like before, everything washes out fine once you've received all invoices and shipped all of the goods. Now what we'll do is see how to correct this asset value in Bright Pearl. Let's start with a purchase order. So here we've got the purchase order for two items at quantity $15 each, so $30 in total. This is the value from our price list and we don't necessarily know this is what we're going to be charged, but we have to receive the goods anyway at a certain value. So let's click Receive Inventory, where we can see the unit cost on the right hand side, and click Submit. We now have two items in stock, which we can see from the Products Inventory Detail screen. Let's have a quick look at the accounting transactions at Reports General Ledger, where we can see that there's a transaction put into Stock or Inventory, which is our asset code. And on the balance sheet, we can see that Stock slash Inventory is $30. Now what we need to do is ship a sale. I've got a couple of sales here ready to go. So let's open one of these up that contains one of these phones. It doesn't matter what we're selling it for because it's the cost of sale that matters. So if we go fulfill and mark as shipped, we'll now have decreased the inventory quantity. So if we go products, inventory detail, we can see there's now only one in stock and our balance sheet will have gone down to $15. We can see there $15. Going to the general ledger, there's this second transaction here, which removes inventory and adds cost of goods sold. What we're going to do now is make a correction for that final item. It's going to be $12 instead of 15. So let's go products, inventory detail, where if we hover over the price column, we can see a little pencil icon. Clicking that shows us the old price, and now let's enter the new price. We need to choose a reason. Let's just call it adjust for now, and then make sure we choose an adjustment code. What I like to do is choose one called Inventory Value Corrections, and you might have to create this first, and then change the value. All remaining inventory is now at $12, and we can see the accounting transaction that's been made at the general ledger. What we have here is the first one, which is removing inventory at $15, this pair of rows, and then the second one here, which is adding the new inventory at $12. If we go to the balance sheet, we can see that our inventory was 15 and it's now 12. Now let's receive the purchase invoice against the purchase order. So let's go and find our purchase order, open it up, and because we've received the invoice at $12 each, we need to make that adjustment here first. So let's change that to 12, hit save. Our purchase order now matches our purchase invoice at $24, click receive invoice, enter the vendor's invoice reference, and if you want to update your cost price so that the next time you use this product, it comes in at 12, leave that ticked, and then receive the invoice. That's now completed the purchase order, and if we go to the general ledger, 
we can see the accounting transaction that's been made for us. So this journal at the top, these top four rows, we've got a cost of sales entry, the $6, and then there's been a correction made to stock in transit, and then the $24 against accounts payable, or aged creditors in the UK. So on our balance sheet, we can still see 12, because that's the current value of our inventory, but if we go to the income statement, or profit and loss report, we can see there's been a correction here, inventory value corrections and cost of goods sold. The two of those sum up to the $12, which is the value of goods that we shipped on that first sale. What I'm going to do now is ship the second sale to bring cost of sales up to $24. So let's go sales, recent sales. I've got another sale here which we can ship with the same phone. Again, the sell price doesn't matter, it's the cost price that we're looking at. Fulfill and mark as shipped. which on the general ledger shows us a $12 cost of sale, which means on the income statement or profit and loss, we can see that the cost of sale for that month is now $24. Our balance sheet will show zero inventory. So no assets up there. It's all been moved across to accounts payable because we owe our supplier. Manually correcting inventory value is an optional process. And you should only do this if you want your balance sheet to reflect your actual invoiced value of inventory for a period end report before a purchase invoice is received. If the purchase invoice has been received, then all of the accounting corrections will already have been made for you, and further manual corrections are usually not required. If you are going to be making inventory value corrections, it's important to know that if you have any inventory allocated to a sale or a goods out note, the asset value for that allocated inventory won't be updated. Brightpearl will only update the value of your on-hand inventory. And that's because a provisional cost has already been assigned to the sale or the goods out note is in progress for those allocated items. And that's about to turn into actual cost of sale accounting entries. So we don't want to go updating the value of those, otherwise your accounts will be wrong. To see that in operation in Brightpearl, we've got a product here, the Manitou Kayak, where we've got 10 in stock, two allocated, eight on hand. So if I amend the price here, it's only going to amend the price of the 8 we have on hand. So let's edit this, change 50 down to 40, and let's just put a reason in, choose my corrections code, and I've added one called inventory value corrections, and change the value. What that's done is that it's kept these two allocated as a separate line at $50, and created a new line at $40 for the 8 remaining items. If I wanted to, I could have unallocated those first, or of course I could unallocate them now, and then make the correction for these two items as well. That takes us to the end of the video, where we look at adjusting inventory cost value. Well done for getting all the way through, and if you need to revisit it and run it through slowly, then definitely do so.